Hello again, it is me, Mr. Xander, your art teacher, and we're going to work on some gazelles today. Here I am. We're going to work on some gazelles today, and uh, we're going to do another watercolor. Now class, and classes I should say, what we're trying to do with these assignments is show you some techniques so that you can do your own using the techniques that I showed you, and you can send them to me. You can take a picture with your mother's phone of your final product, or your dad's phone, or your phone, and you could send it to me at school here at xanderd at district112.org. There's a thousand different ways you could do it, and you can send it to me, and I can give you proper credit for it. Now, the reason that I'm doing YouTube is because I'm better at it than other things because I can use my hands and I can talk to you. I'm not so good at writing things and then getting them to you. I can write, but I have a hard time with Google Docs at times. Enough of my talk and boring prattle. Let's get started here. Here we have a gazelle. I'm gonna pick on this gazelle. And if you remember from last time, here is our beautiful bear and we measured I'll even use a ruler the nose was that long let's see right here to the neck and nose and then we put it next to the body and as you can see this distance and that distance are about the same a similar thing will transpire with the gazelle let's try that here I have my ruler and I'm measuring, I'll just take my pen here, and I'm measuring about how long it is from to the tip of the nose. It's almost two inches. Now I'm going to put this here and measure from the neck. These big boxes are in the way. From the neck, it's the same, two inches. So I can establish that first, that from the tip of the nose to the tip of the horns is the same distance as from edge of the neck to the rear end. Okay, should we try that? Let's do it. Very, very, very roughly and very high up here, it seems like we have a rather long, narrow rectangle, okay? That rectangle includes the horns, okay? So, how much of this is horns? And it seems to me that it's a lot shorter from the back of the neck to the nose than it is from the back of the neck to the nose to the top of the horns. Therefore, we will make the horns slightly longer, which would put them right about there, a little bit lower than half, okay? We know that the length of this is the same as from the bottom of the neck to the rear end. So if this was the bottom of the neck here, I'm going to take this space and place it here, and it almost goes to the very end. Now, you might say, well, Mr. Z, um, guess what? We're not gonna be able to get the legs in. If I don't have the legs in, I'm not gonna have a good animal. Really? It's still gonna look like a gazelle. Now, that's very, very, very simple what I've done. It seems to me that the rear end ends there. It seems to me that the nose comes down, and it's almost flat, isn't it? It's almost flat here. It rounds into the head. There's a cute eye here, a little bit of a nose here. The ears perk straight up, and then there's those gorgeous horns. And by all means, that is very, very, very roughly the shape of the horns. Now, how wide is the body? Let's see, from the top of the head. So it's wider than from, how about from the top of the ears to the neck? Top of the ears to the neck is perfect. Top of the ears to the neck is here. Put that there. Roughly, that's where his belly is. That's how we do it. You can also use a ruler and measure it. Now I'm drawing with this red pen. It is not this red, it's not perfect. I'm not doing it perfect. I'm working out ways. I know that the shoulder connects here because I measured it. I have a little bit of a leg here and beautiful markings. So I think we're gonna do this in watercolor again because of the delightful markings. 
we have a little bit of a haunch here and it goes off the page. Guess what? They have beautiful, delicate feet. You know, they have to get away from all those cheetahs and leopards and lions. That's how it works, baby. You gotta get away. Now, it seems to also have some pretty nice markings. I think I can deal with those later. Now, now that I have the animal drawn, I'm going to go back to work and see what I can do as I outline it to improve it. I don't think I quite got the shape of the face quite right, so I'm gonna to try to improve that as I go on. Nice markings. And I'm gonna put some of those markings in with my black pen, why not? He has a little bit of a mouth here. Very, very nice. Now we have some beautiful horns and another horn one's behind the other we have some area beyond the horns before it goes down okay very good now it seems to me that my neck was a little too thick so I'm gonna thin it out a little bit here and okay Super strong shoulders because they got to get moving fast to get away from those many, many predators that just see them as a walking meal or a running meal. If you ever watch the lions, they know how to run. So I'm seeing that that's pretty good. I think we're almost ready for the watercolor. I'm not super happy with the face yet. I wonder if I can make it better with a little bit of watercolor. Let me try that next. I'm going to get my water because I forgot it. Okay, so everything looks good. I'm going to move him up a little bit for you and move him down a little bit for you. All right, very good. Again, I'm using a rather large brush. And what would you say, class, the main color of the animal was? It looks like it has browns and oranges, if you wish. What we usually like to do, class, is add the light colors first, and then every time you put another layer of watercolor, you darken it slightly. So we set an orangish brown, let's get started. I'm mixing it on the table. Uh, before you mix it on your table, ask mom and dad, is that a good idea? Because, you know, in this times, people's tent, their, temp, their tempers seem to be a little bit frustrated by this COVID business. I don't know about you. Now this line here is much lighter. Let's see what kind of color we came up with. I'm gonna work on the back. That seems to be a nice light color. But always remember again, class, that you leave the whites white. Don't even touch them. In the olden days, they used to do something called a wash. And they would put a wash on their picture, which is one light color, maybe a sunset color like a pink. And then that would be there. And then you'd never have the white of the paper. That's not a good way to do it. So we're gonna leave the white of the paper. Now, I think that it's about time to see if we can darken that orange a little bit and see if we have some darker areas. I'm gonna add a little of its um, complement, which is blue. So I'm adding a little bit of blue to this orange to get a darker color. And let's see if we can put that there. Oh, that looks good. That looks very, very um, gazelle-esque, is that a word? Now we're gonna have to balance it again, so I think I'm gonna put a little bit here and a little bit on his shoulder. That's starting to get good. He seems to have a little bit on his nose. I'll tell you right now, I'm not too fond of his nose. Hmm, okay, let's go back to work here. Now we seem to have a much lighter color for this stripe here, let's put that in. Let's just put some water on it. There it is. 
That's a nice light color, just a little bit lighter. Now, we need a dark color, and there's no darker color than black. Personally, I like to use India ink in my paintings these days so that my blacks are just that black. But since this is a watercolor, remember class, if I put this black next to his wet area here, it's gonna smear, okay? It's gonna smear upwards, and it might cause trouble. So I'm gonna see what I can do and see if it'll move on its own a little bit. Oh, I love those markings. I think I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna show you another technique to fix his nose. Looks like we have some black here, some black here, and maybe some black on the beautiful horns. Now you notice that that's bleeding, it's okay. I'm gonna get a much lighter black. I just added some water to have made kind of a gray almost. And I'm gonna use that for this little dark marking there. That's starting to get pretty good. Now I'm gonna add some other darks. Uh, inside here, there seems to be a little bit of a shadow. Why don't I use that color? And in here, there seems to be a bit of shadow. And I'm looking here and I'm seeing a little bit of brown on the leg that I forgot. So why don't I add that now? We're seeing a little bit of color coming through here. I really like it. Now remember, you'll only run into trouble if you put a wet next to a wet. And I was very, very careful about that. I wanted it to bleed up here. And I can control that better than a lot of people because I'm an art teacher and I've done an awful lot of watercolors. Now, because I don't like the shape of his nose, I'm gonna put a nice dark color in the background and see if I can fix that nose. What do you think of that? I'm gonna start with a nice super dark green. This is another technique I have. It's kind of what we do sometimes because watercolor, when you make a mistake, it's very, very hard to, to, to fix it. Uh, you can color it with white out, I don't quite like the shape of that nose. I'm gonna see what I can do about trying to cover it up a little bit. Oh boy. Okay, that's better. It's not perfect. That's better. Now you guys might say, well, Mr. Z, doggone it, that's a dark background. Well, sometimes we need a dark background when we need to bring our critter back to life. I'm gonna put some more here. That's probably enough dark. Now you guys might say, well, Mr. Z, all I see in the background is green, okay? Great, then we have some green. I think we can stop with that really, really dirty green. Let's see what we can do with some brighter green. And see if we can add it mix it, but you know, leave some light showing. We all know that he's out in the field. That looks really good. And you know what? Green looks nice. Across from the color orange is blue on the color wheel. Therefore, I'm going to see what I can do about a little bit of blue next. And you might say, what is, what is he up to? Well, I'm basically finishing my picture because my picture is what it always was, which is a gazelle. Now I'm having fun with the background and I'm also trying to shape up that nose a little bit, which I wasn't too happy with. What do you think of that? No, I still a ton of white. How about some water? That always looks nice. That is a gazelle. I'm not super happy with the nose, and I could also add some white out there if I felt like it. I think I want to see if I can get his nose to come back in here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then his mouth. I think we're doing a pretty good job on that gazelle. Now, here's some stuff that we always have to talk about, class. We used a rather strong black over there, rectifying the problem I had with the nose, so don't forget to balance it. We probably need a little black in other places. 
You want to soften it a little bit. Well, when the laundry is done, you will see that we have produced a pretty good gazelle. You learned a couple of techniques. You learned a little bit about opposite colors on the color wheel, about leaving white on your paper, about attending to a problem like this here that still I'm still not happy with. And I'm going to give it a Z2020. And I will see you at your next lesson. This is Mr. Z signing out. You can do this lesson. You can find a picture and do your own. I'd love to see your gazelle. I'd love to see your bear. I would also love to see how you applied the techniques that I've been working with you with to do your own work as you learn from a distance. This is Mr. Z signing off.